Good morning. It's a huge, beautiful, happy Thursday for me. And today I'm going to show you a prime example of why you guys need a long, the longest, the biggest, the tallest cargo van. So stay tuned. I think it's going to be interesting for the people that always say, well, I never take a big load or, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. It's always, I always see you carrying small packages. So we'll see what kind of small package we got today. Stay tuned for that one. I'm sorry I didn't even get a chance to turn the camera on. I thought my bed was up, but it wasn't. So I went and checked in, got my paperwork, and then all of a sudden they said, okay, go ahead, you know, open your doors, you know. I'm like, okay, I'll go back up. So I back up, I thought, you know, my stuff was ready here, but the bed was down. So I was putting the bed up and couldn't grab my camera in time to show you guys the loading process. But it is, you know, 15 rolls of carpet, and it actually, they were really worried about it not fitting, but it fit no problem. Like seriously, no problem. I'll show you guys what it looks like. Still, you need a big van for this, even for this, you know what I mean? I have room, this is 15 feet of carpet rolls, or I'm sorry, 15 rolls of carpet padding. And, you know, I far, first started stacking them like this because I saw a big thing that they brought out and I thought, oh, well, maybe they're going to be like two of those. Anyways, this is what 15 six foot rolls look like. Fits really easy. And I think that honestly, <clears throat> we could probably fit another 15 in here maybe if we go roof high. And then if we stand up like another three, six, nine, 12, 12 could you probably just stand right here next to each other when we shove them in here. But fit real nice and easy, so no problem at all. But you still need a big van. <clears throat> you really do. It doesn't matter. You know, some people like want to ask, hey, can I, can I sign on with you guys with a tiny van? It's really, it's really hard and difficult to load small vehicles, just so you guys know. To find a specific load like that when you're paying super high insurance, you know, thousand plus dollars a month, you know, plus your other expenses and just sit around for God knows how long, half a week, a week, just to wait for something small to fit in. In the end, it's just not worth it. So we look out for us as much as for the driver because, you know, another company might say, sure, you can, you can sign up with, you know, we'll take you on with a small vehicle, but then you're not going to get any movement. Dispatch is wasting their time. You're wasting your time, energy, money, finances and everything else it's just really not worth it in a small van so i hope you guys understand it's not just a personal preference oh i only like to work with the big vans it's work wise you know what i mean i sit behind the computer all day long so do our dispatchers and we know what's out there what kind of freight there is we know what kind of answers we get when the driver shows when we tell them the dimensions of the vehicle and they say well that's too you know that's really close we're not going to risk it you know if it's three pallets and the vehicle is 144, half the time they don't give us that load because they worry about something hanging off the side, uh, in the front, you know, something being a little bigger. When it's just way too close, it's just way too close. So a lot of times broker doesn't even give us the load because they don't want to risk it. They, they don't, not fitting, you know? A lot of times shipper gives the wrong dimensions. It happens all the time. Yesterday we had a, it was supposed to be a 3,600 pound uh, load and it came up to be like almost, it was 48 something. So luckily broker was nice enough, you know, and understood that we waited almost a full day to get loaded for that thing until our pickup time. So they worked with us and, you know, said, hey, pick up one pallet and then we're sending somebody else to pick up the second one. Usually it's a cancel right away. So big van, tall van only, if you guys want to work with us. And it's in your benefit too, because you want to have the biggest amount of space to sleep in. That way you don't have to tear the bed apart very often. I can take two pallets without taking the bed apart. So just something to consider. Well, if you guys are fellow, fellow, feller, 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 feller. If you guys do the same thing 
that I do and that we do, we're in the same boat. We're in the same boat as far as the rates go, how slow things are, so on and so forth. So we are experiencing a lot less loads here on the west side. Um, we are experiencing the same thing kind of all over the place, a lot less loads on the load boards a lot less loads being offered to us because brokers themselves, the ones that have fleets, and most of them do, they first and foremost load their own vehicles at first. So then, you know, when things were good, things were good for everybody. Brokers were happy, they had a lot more loads to offer to somebody else. Now, when things are slow and cheap and whatever, the way they are, a lot of people still don't realize what's going on. They think it's the dispatcher's fault. It's not dispatcher fault. Dispatcher wants to make as much money as possible as far as booking as many loads as possible and keeping everybody busy. That's what we do. That's what we want. And that's what we, you know, that's what our goal is. But unfortunately, there's a lot less loads on the boards all throughout. Doesn't matter what you do. The rates are cheap, semi trucks of all sorts. Uh, dry vans are currently driving anywhere from a dollar a mile to dollar fifty. If they get lucky, they drive for a dollar eighty a mile. We're talking about a semi truck with a full load. Those guys get five miles per gallon, sometimes six, maybe seven, depending on what truck they drive and what trailer they pull and how heavy their load is. But for the most part, they they haul, you know, up to forty-five thousand pounds, and they're getting paid almost what you guys are getting paid. But when you do all the takeouts, and once you tip minus the fuel, minus their insurance, which is a lot higher, minus you know all their dealings with DOT, their maintenance is a lot more. Anyways, in the end, I hope you guys understand that. The only, the only people that make money when they're driving semi-trucks are the company drivers. Owner operators are barely squeezing by, but we're still, we're still making it. We're still making it, even though, you know, the rates are what they are. We, we, as far as cargo vans, we make less, no doubt about it. There's less loads. Sometimes there's downtimes where there's no loads and people are sitting around. But in the end, we're still making money, even if we're driving at cheaper rates because the operation costs are a lot lower. So just so you guys know, you know, that's what the situation is. And it's like this all over. It doesn't matter where you're at. Atlanta's like that. Virginia's like that. Carolinas are like that. Florida's almost non-existent. So hard to get something out of Florida. Um, West Coast has been, yeah, I mean, I'm on the West Coast. And I think this is, where did I go? Last week, did I go somewhere? I think I only did like, Within three weeks, this is my second second load that I'm doing. So there hasn't been much going on. And when there is, the rates are just so ridiculous that you know they can't pay that round trip for me. Even though it picks up out of a dead area and goes to a dead area, they still can't pay because they keep finding somebody else who's going for cheaper. There's always somebody that's gonna go for cheaper. There's a lot of people on the you know, paid off vans that don't have the same kind of bills that every, you know that others have, so on and so forth. So, the only people that are surviving, the ones that are making money and still going through, are if your van is paid off, maybe if your house is paid off, or if you you know live on the road, then that makes it a lot easier. If your insurance cost is lower, there's just some states who charge ridiculous amount of money, like Florida, New York, um, California. Um, Washington and Oregon, eh, it depends who you are and what your record is and stuff like that. We're still on the higher side. Um, but there are cheaper states throughout the nation for insurance and those are the people that can survive, just so you guys know. So those of you who are calling around company to company, hunting for a better rate, so on and so forth, it's just the luck of the draw. If you're out in an area where there's nobody there, you're gonna get out quicker if you're in an area where there's a lot of vehicles, big concentration of vehicles and no freight. Just remember this, every single day, all day long, there's always somebody pulling up and parking and waiting for the next load. 
And if there's not enough loads there, that means the pileup is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So there's more vehicles than freight out there. Just something to consider. So right now is the time where when things were good and the drivers were putting money away, saving money, now is the time to, if you don't have enough or something, you know, you don't have enough for a payment, a house payment, something else payment, whatever, whatever kind of payment, now is the time to go reach into those envelopes that you packed up and, you know, slowly here and there if you need it really, you know, pull out, pull out some paper from there because there's lots of drivers who thought that this was going to be great forever and it was just going to get even better and better. Um, that's, not how, that's not how business works. It's not how this industry works. And it's not a get rich type of, uh, type of business. Right now, I think what's going to happen is all the drivers that love the industry, that are professional drivers, that have a passion for this, they're going to be, they're going to be just fine. You know, the, plus, the pluses and minuses, they're just going to wash out, become an average. And the people that really enjoy doing this, they're still going to survive. They're going to pull through. They're the ones that have a good attitude, even if it's slow or cheap, it doesn't matter. People with a bad attitude that never have enough, no matter how much you pay them per mile or how much money they make per load, per day, per month, per year, it's never enough for them and they always complain and find a reason to complain about something. Well, those drivers are not going to last. They're going to be out of, out of the game. And frankly, that's okay because who needs a bad attitude? Who needs a complainer? And it's just not worth it to be in a bad state of mind, honestly. If you're positive, if you're always looking ahead, thinking about the future, being grateful for what you have, so on and so forth, you're gonna have the right kind of attitude for really any kind of work, especially this, especially in the down times, in the slow times, so. We'll be okay. If you guys are out there driving, you're staying positive, you know what's going on, you know it's gonna bounce back, and it will bounce back. It's just a matter of who's gonna stay in the game for the bounce back, and things are gonna get better. It's just a matter of time when. Nobody knows when that is. Some people predict it'll be next year. Some people predict it'll be in the summer. Some people think it's gonna get better in the summer. I just think it has to hit rock bottom first. That's my personal opinion. I'm not a, I'm not an Ostradamus or, you know, I don't have a crystal ball in front of me or, you know, I don't have any kind of prophecies. So it's just how the market's going. Spot market is spot market. So there's a lot of people that are doing this. There's a lot of people that are going to be leaving this because it's not what they thought it would be. They can't handle the sitting around. They can't handle the waiting. They always thought that maybe they should stay busy, busy, busy. But you know what? Staying busy, we were staying busy and the drivers that were staying busy, a lot of them were too busy to where they were, you know, like gasping for air, you know? So those times are over. Now it's time to relax, stay calm, be grateful for what you have because we're still making money. So hopefully that's, you know, some kind of an input that you guys can take to heart. And, you know, we're not closing down. We ain't going anywhere. We've, during the good times, we've been saving. And we're going to pull through this no matter what, no matter how bad it gets. Even if we're left all by ourselves, we're still, I'm still going to be here hauling loads in my, in my area. And if it needed to be, I will go out and about and stay out for as long as I need to be just to feed the family and so on and so forth. But I don't think it'll ever come down to that because there will still be drivers out there that are gonna be driving, you know, that are gonna be grateful for what this is. It's just a little bit less money and it's a little bit slower. You know, that's all that is. So right now is a perfect time. You guys have perfect time to get some kind of a toy, maybe an e-bike like a Van Powers one 
maybe a scooter of some sort, you know, something to pass by time. Go to the gym, you know, hit up that Planet Fitness. Stay fit while you're waiting for the load. Once you got something, be grateful that you have it and go make that money. That's really all the advice that I got for you guys. It's springtime over here in Kennewick, Washington, the Tri-Cities area. I just drove by a couple of trees that are already blooming. Got flowers and all kinds of good smells. Oh, here we go. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Where is this place? Look at the trees. I'm trying to find the name of the company here too. Arriving at 6512 West Hood Place on the left. Anyway. I think it's somewhere over here. I just need to find where. Always happens when I'm unprepared. You guys don't get to see the, well, what, do you, what is there to see? See some pads getting unloaded by hand. I guess you guys saw it, but I wanted to kind of position that camera maybe outside or, or somewhere else. But I get there and my GPS says I'm there. I'm looking for the name of the business and there's only, you know, two or whatever businesses that are uh, marked or labeled or have a sign up. Everything else is, who knows what. So I ended up sitting there looking them up on Google, um, trying to find a phone number, trying to find um, through broker's paperwork, through broker's emails maybe if there's anything, and there, there wasn't anything. So I was about to write a broker an email asking, hey, is there any kind of contact info? And I was gonna, meanwhile, I was gonna go door to door hopping, find out where the, where the place is. Then a young lady comes out, opens the door and starts, you know, saying, hey, you brought pads for me? And I says, yes. So we were there and then meanwhile, I just put the camera up in the van and that's what, that's the unloading that you get to see today. So hopefully that's good enough for you. I got a little bit of a workout. It's nice and hot here, 55 degrees true spring in Tri-Cities, Spokane is still far from that. Besides that, I don't know, here you go, nice and sunny. You guys can come and check out the Tri-Cities area yourself if you'd like. <laughs> 